she'll tell some stories, open it up for questions kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that cool? Let's and go like, with the flow. We'll go free flow. Yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for, thank you Ryan for inviting me. Whenever somebody asks me to speak, I feel like I'm adequate for giving advices because I've made so many mistakes in my career. But thank God at the end it turned out very well. So my, only later I realized that it, it, would, it would be more wise to learn my own mistakes, but I wasn't that wise during my teen years and especially around maybe 20. And I can honestly say that I, become, I became a true professional mentally only maybe when I was 21, 22. And up to then, it was a real struggle for me because I just, I just wanted to be a normal teenager doing normal stuff with my friends and I always also wanted to be an elite athlete but you just cannot combine those two and that's the first time that I face um, sacrifice, the meaning of sacrifice uh, because if I wanted to go further than most people I knew that I needed to sacrifice more and I, I was also aware that those teenage years, living, you know, a teenage life, is something that everybody are able to do, and everybody has that opportunity. But to see the world, to travel around, to hang out with top athletes, to perform on a um, world championships, European championships, to be a part of elite ath athletics it's just something that doesn't come by very often and at one point it was an easy decision to make because i always knew that i wanted to be the best in what i do but you know in order to make that decision reality it took me quite some time i was brought up in a sport family my both both of my parents were athletes are and um I was living sports since my, you know, even before I started to walk, walk. My, my, my father already started to work a little bit with me and it was all, you know, games. I did even tried volleyball and, and basketball and tennis and so many sports. But when I was 14 and I did my first high jump, I knew that there's something big there and that my talent lies in that event. Uh, once I realized that I have a talent to be not just above average, but excellent in, in, in what I do in my uh, sport, I felt it's kind of responsibility towards my talent because we are, you are all born with sport talent and it's not just yours. And in a way, it is your decision, but maybe also not. Uh, because you owe it to yourself, you owe it to people around you who will be nourished by your talent and by your accomplishment. You owe it to, your, to, to yourself and to them to try to explore how far you can go. There is no, wor I think, the worst thing you can have is regret that you haven't give 100% that, that you haven't tried. You will always wonder what could have been if you didn't, if you don't invest now 100% towards developing your talent. Um, and living with regrets, it's not a good feeling. So if volleyball is your talent, if you, tra if you are truly passionate about it, then you owe, you owe it to yourself to explore it and to see how far you can go. At least try to make a living out of it, which is not a bad, well that, that's actually a very great achievement. Uh, to do what you love, to enjoy what you love, because work is 80% of, of our life and you better enjoy what you do. You better enjoy every minute. Now how to find 
happiness and fulfilling within the job that actually takes so much from us. Being a lady in sport, it's also not very easy things to do and people don't talk much about it, how many things we need to go through uh, with our bodies just because we are women and we need to put our bodies under so much, so much pressure, so, many, so much physical stress um, and you know at least once a month we feel terrible <laughs> and then during those months you need to go practice, you need to get yourself together and we know how, how much, how, how it's not easy to put that aside. Um, so I compliment you that you choose this path uh, and I think that being a woman in sport we can be example to other women that actually uh, we can do so much more than world think we can. And that's also a special call for each one of us. So back to sacrifice. For my sport, it was important to, you know, as that for every sport, sport, but for high jump especially, to, to be on a strict diet. Um, and that was one of the greatest sacrifices for me. I had to watch every single bite. And that's when I actually started to think as a pro. So, and this relationship with food, it can be duplicated to every situation that you will face. Like food as a satisfaction, it lasts 15 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour, but satisfaction or success lasts much longer. So if you choose quick and short satisfactions in everything in your life, then you'll be, you will be satisfied for that short amount of time. But if you choose to succeed in something that you do, and you finally, when you finally do it, that success will be a part of you your whole life. So even though I'm not jumping anymore, I wake up every, every day, not with a conscious notion, but with a subconscious notion that one time in my life, I was the best in the world. And that, that nobody, nobody can take that away from me. So all these small sacrifices that feel so, so great in the moment, in the bigger picture, they're actually not that big. And they're not so heavy. As long as you have the goal in front of your eyes constantly. So I don't know how old, what is the average of your, how old are you, like 18, 19, 20, right? Yeah, so it is very important to choose. Yeah, so, so it, it is very, it is very important to like try to start to think as an athlete as soon as possible. Being an athlete doesn't, it's not just practice from five to seven. It's not just stretching afterwards. It's not just um, physical therapy. Um, learning your technique and stuff. It's 24-7 job. You just, you never, you're always an athlete. When I was in middle school, my father told me, well, if you are sitting in, a, in school for six, seven hours, and you're, you, you will be sore, you will be stiff. So if you see a bus coming your way and you know you can catch it, don't run after it because you will maybe, you know, hurt your hamstring, just wait for another bus, you know? So small things like that. So many of my friends were doing, you know, so many school act uh, sport activities like, like skiing, roller skating, and, you know, just to hang out and to spend quality time together. But for me, that wasn't an option because that wasn't my sport and there was a risk of injury every time I do something that, you know, it's more than just walking or being under a strict supervision in my practice. So that means that even when you're not training, you're thinking about 
training, you're thinking about how to make things better. When you're sleeping, that's part of your training regimen because you need to have rest. When you're eating, you need to know that you are taking fuel just to be better in what you do. So, as I said, it's 24 7 job and as soon as you figure that out it will be easier for you to do that transition from living it just part-time to living it 24 7. Um, sacrifice are, is, is like scary words nowadays, nowadays because so many people just want, look for a quick fix for a quick satisfaction everything that we need or want every single information is available within a few seconds and when we want something we are used to get it right away otherwise we become nervous we we just we just quit and that doesn't make us resilient if you learn to wait, if you learn to invest in your goals, once that goal comes, you will learn what you will learn how to appreciate it. So nowadays we don't appreciate accomplishments because everything happens so so soon. But if you invest in something for 10, 15 years, 20 years, once you come up there, once you get your first great win, your first great transfer, your first great medal. I remember my first uh, Croatian anthem on the big uh, C winning world championships in 2007. And that was my, my dream was to, to listen to Croatian anthem. Uh, and with a gold medal around my neck. So, and I was always imagining how it would be, how I would feel. And it is actually true. My whole life was running in front of my eyes, like in pictures. I remembered my first jump. I remember how my parents didn't have money to send me to, to, to competition, so we had to borrow money. I didn't have two set of clothes for, for training. I had only one, and I was teased and bullied because I was poor and uh, and also in my, in, in my, in, in Kosa Kajos Nona Shkola. Elementary school, um, I was bullied because I was too tall. Mm -hmm. But you know, Roda <laughs> each other. Classic, classic. Tall people. Yeah. Tall people. Yeah. Tall women. Dumb nicknames. Mm -hmm. But but in my mind, I was aware that I'm going somewhere where those people are going, and that actually kept me like kept my um, self-confidence. I didn't lose it. I wasn't, so they would tell me something, but in my mind, I would say to, to myself, you'll see one day. And so all of those pictures came in front of my eyes, listening to the Croatian anthem. And I, was, I wasn't really angry, feeling angry towards those people who mocked me or those situations who were on in my way and made my life different, difficult. I was actually grateful because without those situations, without those people, maybe I wouldn't be the, you know, the best in the world at that moment because that is also a part of motivation, what, what kept me going, you know, this, rebel, uh, this rebellion attitude that I, will, I, I know I can show you, I know I'm, I'm better than what you think of me. So, um, as I said, being a world champion once, first and second time, and accomplished so many things after my 24th, yeah. I realized that everything would happen before, every struggle was just, it was worth it. And I would do, do it all over again, even, you know, even if somebody would tell me it would be twice as hard. I would I would do it because now in my retirement I know that I gave hundred percent sure you know in my let's say wisdom nowadays I would change some things I would try to do things better but in that moment I did what I could and that what gives me peace and satisfaction to move move on with my life and to try to you know be good in some other um, you know career or whatever so. 
it's not an easy path, path that you chose, and but it's the, it's the path that you cannot do halfway. Every it is you know your sport is so competitive. So if it will not be you, it will be some other girl. And there is always somebody who is willing to do more for the same goal. So I advise you that you should be that person. Um, in between top athletes, there's only one or two percent different. And dif that difference cannot be seen in practice usually. It can be seen in their everyday life. What you do to make your everyday life more quality, uh, uh, more goal oriented. It's usually the small things. So uh, in sport, everything everything matters, even the smallest things. So uh, get to know yourself. Get to know how what is your how how you can be motivated. For me, it was you cannot do it. Somebody would tell me I cannot do it. I would do it. I never lost a bet with my dad in practice. And but for somebody, when some when someone tells you you cannot do it, that's actually not very motivating thing to do. For somebody, somebody needs you know encouragement. Come on, I believe in you. I trust in you. You know you can do it. So you know each one of us is we are different, and you just need to get to know yourself so you know what can what drives you. So you know what people, what 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 circumstances can bring the best of out of you. Surround yourself with people who want what is best for you, who are looking in the same way, in the same direction. Also your friends. It is very important that your friends also are your support. For me it was like I, I was never I never had time to go out. So my friends would come over. We would have party in my house or you know because I would be too tired afterwards so they would come over. So they had they had uh, understand and um, yeah they understood my way of life and they were they were able to adapt and it's not easy to understand a brain of a sport lady uh, we are very difficult because there is a part in our life where we need to walk on the edge whole time we need to endure pain or both physically and mentally and we do uh, do it without being forced so we are just like torturing our body we're torturing our mind in order just to go over our limits and then just prolong that that um, you know limit because every time you go over a limit it just becomes it doesn't stay back it's uh, how do I say it becomes it's, a new limit yeah it yeah. becomes yeah. a new limit so you always break it, you always break it and it's it's mind that's it's restless mind you know and just being able to be in a healthy relationship with other people having this mind it's also a challenge so surround your people with surround yourself with people who understand you who get you who will not be an extra burden to you will not bring an extra stress in your life um, it, it's um, it's definitely a challenging way of life but it's very rewarding you will meet so many people as I said you will travel the world you will not be sorry uh, because you didn't let ordinary life or less ordinary life because sport gives you so many emotions that now I feel that I've lived three lives in my career and I've experienced things that I, that, let's say people that are working office jobs maybe cannot experience. Also, there is a connection with people, with, your, with crowd. It's also a special element for me because I always felt though, even, even, even I am in you know, individual sport, that I'm not jumping alone, I'm jumping for people. Connection with your fans, it's very important those people motivate you even if you're not 100% in the game um, and there is a special story there especially uh, when you feel that 
they're cheer cheering you and they want this they want you to be good they want you to thrive and when those desires meet you know explosion comes uh, explosion of emotions of the good feelings so don't forget about them as well especially when you when you succeed be kind to everyone your your talent is a gift and as I said in the beginning you owe it not just to yourself but you owe it to others and you need to share it uh, so I wish you oh my god Rosa I wish you all the best I wish I wish that you try I wish that you uh, learn how to fight your lazy self because there is always a part of us that wants to be comfortable. Sport is always getting out of your comfort zone. Sport is never means never being comfortable. And if you want to be a lead athlete, you need to accept that from the beginning. You will never be comfortable. But you can be happy, you can be fulfilled, you can feel something that it's just you cannot describe by words. So at the end, it's very much worth it. Do you mind having a question? I do. Um, what were some ways that you found joy when you felt like you were sacrificing so much or when your sport got super hard? Like, what did you do? Well, to be honest, there was never, um, to be honest, uh, high jump is like my true love. So even though when I would make sacrifices because I knew I made the right choice, the right career choice, it was always that feeling that I love what I do, so sacrifice is not hard. It's very hard when you need to sacrifice and you feel like it's for nothing. But if you really love what you do, then sacrifice also becomes easy, you know? So. Like for me, it would be, okay, going to the practice and do a really, really good job. And then I would feel so good about myself, about what I've done, that every sacrifice would be, you know, I, I would know at that moment, moment it's worth it. Of course, there are some times, there are so many times when things didn't go as I imagined. Like I would lose, I would, you know, I would do a really bad result. And that those are the moments where it, to just you know be patient calm down realize that there that is a teaching moment and that that moment eventually can produce bigger results so um, whenever it's very very hard you just wait because it will pass you know and if you need a time to vent or to do you know small things just in order to just like Breathe a little bit, do it, you know? So it's not like when you're in sport, everything else is forbidden. It's not forbidden, you just need to find a balance. So you, you will uh, discover things that make you feel instantly better. So you just go, go towards them when you feel like you just cannot. But if you truly love what you do, if you truly love volleyball, then uh, you will know that sacrifice, every sacrifice, no matter how hard it may seem in the moment, it's worth it because you're going somewhere where um, others can only dream. Thank you so much for your speech. Um, it's really nice to Can you repeat the questions just briefly? So okay, so what about, yeah, yeah, what about um, a mental preparation? Well, I, to be honest, I never had a special mental preparation routine. I was always able to focus on one thing very strongly. So you know the stadium, there's so many events going on, you know, crowds. And, you know, sometimes, you know, my approach goes in the lines, so I need to watch, you know, if somebody's running, so okay. 
when they will come, I need to hurry, I need to wait for them. So, so many distractions. So I learned how to be present in the moment and to ignore everything. Um, so one exercise that I, that really helped me is, um, uh, how do you say, I forgot, imagination, like, uh, visualization especially when I was when I was injured and I wasn't able to jump as much in practice as I needed to so sometimes I would go to a big competition Olympic games or world championships without even one jump two months prior so I had to jump it in my mind I had I knew that if my mind is doing it in like in a, in a correct way, enough times, once the moment comes, it will be able to do, I will be able to do it in real time. So visualization is important if you, your imagination is very strong, very good, so you can imagine all the details, even the feelings of, your, of you doing a good job. So your visualization always needs to have a positive um, okay. outcome, yeah. So the bar always stays in my head. I do the perfect jump. Everybody are cheering. The atmosphere is great. I go every step in my, in my head and I try to imagine it as vivid as possible. Because somebody told me maybe that's not true. If you're doing that, brain doesn't know the difference. So once you come to the, once I came to the stadium and I did that, what I repeated so many times in my head, my brain was just like, okay, we've been here, we've done this before. So it's very important to stay positive. And you know when people say, believe in yourself, and I was always like, yeah, but under some circumstances, if you're not talented for, like, I could never visualize, visualize myself being good at ballet because I'm not. So you need to be realistic about what you imagine and what you want. Once you find that pool of realistic expectations and you are allowed to want the best for you within your stupid to say limits, but you know, of course you cannot imagine to be something that you're not talented for. But why not imagine being one of the best volleyball players in the world? You have nothing to lose because you don't have that at the moment. So you're not losing anything. You're just motivating yourself. You're just wishing the best for yourself, and you have right to do that. But as you know, there are always there are always so many things you know you can do for yourself for your mental health. Um, I would suggest uh, deal with things immediately, not to put things under the car carpet because eventually it will come and chase you. Maybe in the moment that you don't want it to. Um, again. We are all different personalities. Some, think, some people are just introverts and they like to be alone and think. Um, I'm like that. I always was like, I, I appreciated a long time. I always had a, a notebook, you know, writing things I should change. I change, I could change, you know, goals. After bed competition, I would make also a list of uh, things that I should approve. And it just eventually I learned what works for me best. So I like quiet outside of practice, outside of nutrition. I like quiet. I didn't, I didn't read newspapers. I tried to, I said to my friends, if you hear something, I live in a small city, so people like to talk. So, so I said to my friends, don't tell me anything that I don't, I don't have to hear. I don't, I don't care. So, so I, I, I tried to, try to protect myself and just focus on one thing. I have another question. You said that uh, when you turned 20, you started thinking as an athlete, yeah. of yourself as an elite athlete. And what things did you implement from that date and on, uh, besides being mentally aware yeah. that you were an athlete? I started to live on my own. I was actually 19 when I decided, because my father is my coach was my coach and it was just a strong connection between us, him being my father, seeing him outside the practice and seeing him in practice. And at one point I wasn't 
sure if I'm doing this for him or if I'm doing this for myself. So I knew that I need some kind of distance in order to figure things out. So once I stayed on my own and once I realized that everything that I do, good or bad, bad I do it to myself, not to anybody else, not to my coach, not to my parents. So I realized, okay, so things are very serious now. I need to learn. I need to live with my mistakes. And uh, that's, that's actually the responsibility you need to take in order to mature as a person, but also as an athlete. So that was a huge step for me. Um, you know, I wasn't like, I felt more, even more responsible towards my talent that I just knew that, you know, this is the time to start acting as a pro or otherwise it will be late. Uh, other things specific, no, I was just, you know, going to practice, uh, you know, working on my recovery. It's very important if you can to stay injury free. So don't forget to implement a good physio in your daily routine. Even though if not, even though nothing hurts, prevent, you know, to prevent injury, you know, it's just more important than people realize. So those kind of stuff, you know, I would, you know, have a routine. For us, it's very important to have a routine. We know, we need to know what to expect. You know? I function well when I have a schedule. More, you know, when I wake up in the morning, what I, what I have for lunch, my nap time, my sleep time, how I relax. Is it watching some, you know, Netflix or hanging with my friends? I find what suits me best. So you just eventually you you get what what works best for you. Do you want? Insecurity is about, am I going to make it? Am I good enough? Or other insecurities? Yeah, well, I was, to be honest, even when I was, at the, you know, the best in the world, coming to competition, I never came, like, cocky, like, I know I can beat you. I knew I'm, I'm able to beat them, you know, but I was always, every, every competition was, I'm starting from the beginning, because I was, the worst critic towards myself, so it was never good enough. So, small insecurity was always present, always. But now I'm grateful for that uh, because it made me stay awake the whole time. And even, you know, I always knew in my head if I relax, some other girl is just behind my, is behind my back. So, she will come and I shouldn't relax. So insecurity is, it's always, it's always going to be there. It's part of life, whatever you do, you know. You just need to know, to learn how to control it so it doesn't become uh, so strong that affects your, uh, you know, your performance. So even though I would, for, you know, every time I, I would come to Olympic Games, I knew, okay, for one competition in four years, this is this is it. The whole nation, the whole eyes are on me, you know. And the part of me, who just want to run away, is such a huge stress in one moment when you start, when you realize where you're at, and then you will have another chance only in four years. And that in the next two hours, everything what you work for your entire life, you know, will be shown, will be visible, and in two hours you will know if you won or not. So, of course, you have a tendency to break it, to run away. But for me, the breaking, the key moment was, you know, the moment I would put my spikes on, the moment I started to measure my approach. That was the moment when I actually focused on things that needs to be done. So my mind was just focused on things that I can influence and uh, I can put under my control. And I wasn't thinking, what if, or things like that. So what if is your worst enemy? What if, what if? Things will always be, turn out to be 
so much different than we imagined. We will have 100 scenarios in our head. At the end, it will be 101st scenario. So don't waste your time on thinking what if. Just waste your time on what you can do in this present moment. And just learn to, so insecure, insecurities and, and, and when you, you know, uh, insecurities can be your, uh, your plus, your benefit, if you learn how to feed properly on your insecurities, you know. So if you are, for me, I was doing so much better under pressure than without. I never jumped higher in my practice than in competition. Competition was a place that, you know, I tried. Practice was just practice, and I was never motivated enough, and there wasn't enough stress for me to, to you know, to to do my, you know, to to give 110 percent. So try to be a performer. Try to learn your, try to teach yourself to perform better under pressure. So after that, your insecurities will be just something that is like. You know, somebody when somebody tells you you cannot, and then you say, "Okay, I, I will prove you to you that I can." How many questions do you yeah, have time for? Sorry. How many more questions do you have time? What? Five, ten minutes. Okay. It's seven. Okay, but I just wanted to ask. Okay, regardless of what you guys wrote, I I just wanted to ask something that I think will help them, okay. and it's uh, also about insecurity because I think it will actually help them now. Especially now, how do you deal with the, your insecurities that set in when once you cannot do some technical thing like something that you're really good at and boom, in practice some shit happens and you feel like everything's off. How you deal oh, yeah. with that? Oh, wow, I would get frustrated. I would go crazy. Yeah. And, you know, technique is... For me, I was very early aware the, the, the importance of technique and I had a technical coach who worked with, with me on every detail. So, it is actually it makes so much difference, I, I, I don't have to tell you. And my goal was always like to become so automatic in, with good technique that I can do it in midnight, three o'clock in the morning, whenever you wake me up. But in order to achieve that, I was only able to do that past 25. Before that, it was, you know, it was always ups and downs, you know, but repetition makes it more perfect. So it's okay to become, um, you know, um, at the moment, you know, aggravated by, things that you cannot do, but it's also important not to stop trying. So if you go into a tunnel that has no way out, you say, okay, today, today is not my day. It's not my day to go there, so I need to relax. Because technique is also about your your mind, your, you know, if you, you need to be fresh, you need to be sharp, you know, so some days you just cannot be that and you do things wrong. Uh, but you know, you need to do it. I think every day. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, it was like. Thank you. To, yeah. Thank you for answering yeah. that because this is exactly like for young athletes. It's so important for them to hear it from different sources mm -hmm. and the reasons why. And we all deal with it in a different way. And of course, we all told them our stories. And I, I think yours is so important because it comes from a different sport yeah. and you deal with it all but it's also very similar because yeah. you just need like i think it's important like especially this uh her her sport is so much focused on technique but the volleyball is also yeah. and and it's so technical and it, it prevent a good technique prevents injuries it it like it it makes it makes you enjoy your sport more it makes it, it makes you understand your sport better yeah. Because everything comes easier, so we like it opens some new windows and stuff like that. But like, it comes with yeah. repetition, right? Like a ball needs to become a part of you. That's yeah. what. That's how I imagine. Like because my brother is a soccer player, and I knew that he started to to play. Like with three years old, he he had his 
his ball all the time with him. Mm -hmm. He started with four. So now he can do the same thing with left and right hand, uh, leg. He's so in sync once he has the ball that he can run fa as fast without and with, with the ball. So without enough repetition, without, without touching it every day, working with it every day, it wouldn't happen. So, thanks. And also, I mean, it's, a, it's important to have a good coach that can, of course. In, in, that, in that moment, correct. Of course. Once you learn to do it in the wrong way, it's very hard to, to, uh, to make any changes. I know because so many girls in high jump, like, they would have so much, so much stuff. I, I would see, but they somebody taught him taught them bad technique, yeah. and it was like five centimeter difference, just like that. It's possible to change, but it's, it's it is possible to change. But now it's time when you're young to learn it yeah. in the right exactly. way. Yeah. And um, girls actually compiled a bunch of uh, questions for all the mentors. I uh, just pick a couple of them okay. that I think. I mean, I. I know, I mean, we all know you, I, and I know your story from different, I mean, know each other, yeah. later, so we're kind of connected. So I just wanted to ask you, it's kind of a personal question, but like, I, I think at, um, at certain, when you're a certain level and you go through a, a, this level of stress and sacrifice and everything for such a long time that eventually this kind of question creeps in for everyone. It did for me, and uh, did you ever, yeah. Uh, did, did you ever want to quit? No. Yeah. Yeah. No, even even when I was I was severely injured. Yeah. Uh, I'm injured. I was injured for, for the past ten or more uh, years of my career, both Achilles, two surgeries, and I was still. In, uh, at one time, I was practicing only in one leg, and I did what I could on the other, and. In that mess, I went in Rio 2016. I was such a mess. I jumped with a painkiller. I didn't feel my leg at all mm -hmm. because it was such a strong injection, and I, I went there. I don't know. It's kind of. I felt like this is this is my calling. I would I would do it all over again. That's why I never wanted to quit. Mm -hmm. I also set my goals very high, like jumping world record and winning. Uh, uh, Olympic and world champion title. I didn't do two of those, so Olympic gold and world record. I came close though. Mm -hmm. So I can. I think that high goals always drew, draw me mm -hmm. never to quit. At one time, at what moment I need, needed to say, okay, my health is major, I mean, jeopardized at this moment, everything hurts. I, even today I wake up with a severe pain mm -hmm. in my Achilles, mm -hmm. which is normal. But, so I had to say, okay, now now it's enough. I know I did my best. It wasn't just, somebody else will jump the world record. But I'm not, you know, sorry. Mm -hmm. It just it didn't happen for me. I knew I, I knew I gave my best. There will be time when you will feel, okay, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. And that's, you know, the other part of us, ourselves that wants to be comfortable, but, Every time you win against that other part of yourself, when you go, even when you're not feeling right that day, you will feel that you know you've accomplished something. And those small victories are those who, who count. Yeah. 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 We need to. We need to. It's it's constant fight against. So the, here inside. Yeah. That's, that's the greatest fight. The, I think the best, the best feeling, like there is a really fine line between quitting and actual, the, the natural course of your career of coming to the yeah, end. There's a great satisfaction when you actually feel the end, but in peace, because you yeah. have peace. Yes. And that's it. I think this is like, okay, you're at your beginnings and it's super exciting, but once you achieve something, any little thing, and you did something in this sport, it's the most wonderful, wonderful feeling, and you want it to go on forever. And of course, it cannot. Yeah. Of course. And um, <laughs> then this whole another level of of the career comes out, and you need to face and the problems that come with it, mm -hmm. and you need to face 
face it on right on and then the whole thing is that the the life of it comes to its natural end right so you don't force it you don't like yeah. it's a fine line but the beauty is in it yeah but yeah. also you know you can watch it from a from a very positive perspective like we are bound to retire very early so we have so many years, years <laughs> of quality life to yes. live to change our yes, to yes. change our career maybe to change you know completely the direction yes. of their life so our life is so interesting because we get to do at least two jobs yes. You know, at it's least, not three. At least it's not more. <laughs> it's so not more. It's, yeah. yeah, I mean that's the the lucky part. If, if you take, if you look at it that way, that's really lucky, mm -hmm. because you get to explore the person who you really are after your, yeah. after, the athlete part. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, yes. And I think there's, yeah. uh, there's a lot there, so hopefully, a lot of you will get to experience that. I really wish for you that. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for Appreciate listening. It. Thanks for the questions, ladies. Okay. That's everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.